with our discussion on fractions. So last week we talked about fractions identifying them and then earlier this week we talked about fractions of a set. And just as a quick review, remember fractions must have equal parts. If the parts are not equal, it is not a fraction. Also, looking at my fraction, one third, the top number is also known as the numerator. So my one is the numerator and that would be the number of parts that are missing or shaded in, depending on your question. Then I have my bottom number, which is my denominator. And that would mean that it's the total number of parts or pieces in my whole or set. All right, so today we are gonna talk about comparing fractions. And earlier this year, we talked about comparing two digit and three digit numbers. And we are going to use that knowledge or our schema to help us compare fractions. And just as a quick review, remember our less than sign opens to the right. So that would mean the two dots are facing the right. Our greater than sign opens to the left. So our two dots would be towards the left. And then we have our equal sign, which means the two numbers are the same. All right, so when we are learning about comparing fractions, what you are going to do is that you are going to look at the denominator. And for all of the fractions that we are comparing, all, the numerator is always going to be one and that's called a unit fraction. So that's why we are so focused on the denominator, which is remember the bottom number. So you're going to look at the denominator and the smaller the denominator, the larger the parts you have, which means that fraction is greater. So looking at one half, my model is broken into two parts. Whereas one fourth, my model is broken up into four parts. I want you to look at those parts. What do you notice? I notice that my one half part is much larger than my one fourth. It would actually take two of these to equal one of those. So, if I were to have a slice of cake, I would probably want the one half slice rather than the one fourth because I'm getting more. So one half is greater than one fourth. Next, we're gonna look at another example. I have one sixth and one third. With my one sixth, that means that my whole is broken up into six pieces. And my one third, my whole is broken in, into three pieces. Now my six is a larger number than the three, but that means I have more parts and those parts are gonna be smaller because when we add another part, the part is getting smaller. So one sixth is less than one third. And then my last example on your note sheet is one sixth and one sixth. So those denominators are the same. I'm looking at my model, they're the same. So one sixth is equal to one sixth. Let's try some other examples. So if I had one half and I had one third. And I also have my fraction bars that were in your packet last week included in the notes. There's also online um, fraction bars. And then also if you don't have fraction bars, that's okay. You can also draw your model. So I could draw my circle and make it one half. And then I could also draw one third and try your best to make those pieces equal. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, so I'm looking at one half and one third. I know that two is a smaller number than three, and that means my whole is only broken up into two pieces, whereas one third is broken up to three pieces. 
So my parts are going to be larger in my one half than my one third. And also looking at my fraction bars, one half is clearly larger than one third. So if I were to write this using my comparison signs, I would have one half is greater than one third. All right, let's try another example. So if I have one fourth and one sixth, and remember if you don't have fraction bars, you can draw the model. I have one fourth and one sixth. I'm gonna put my fraction bars together just to help me with that visual. And we are gonna look at the denominators. I know that four is, lar is a smaller number than six. And that means my whole is only broken up into four pieces rather than six. So also looking at my fraction bars, one fourth is greater than one sixth. Now let's look at another example. I have one eighth and one sixth. So one eighth means that my whole has eight parts. One sixth means my whole has six parts. And I'm going to put my fraction bars together just to help me with my visual. Now I know eight is a larger number than six, but that means that my parts are smaller. And looking at my fraction bar, ooh, looking at my fraction bars, what do you notice? One eighth is smaller than one sixth. So that must mean that one eighth is less than one sixth. You are looking at the denominator because we're comparing unit fractions and that numerator is always going to be one. So we're focused on the denominator or the bottom number. And if your denominator is smaller than the other one, that means the parts are larger 